Hi everyone, welcome to episode 3 of the Weavey and Llama Index series. In this video, I'll be going over 4 advanced query engines implemented in Llama Index. I'll start off with the SQL router, then I'll jump over to the sub-question query engine, the recursive router, and then the self-correcting. Let's jump into the video. Let's begin with the SQL router query engine. In this example, I am asking, what is the longest Weavey podcast? Rather than routing to my vector database, because it's not a semantic query, it is going to route to the SQL database and it will output the podcast that has the longest duration. The sub-question query engine breaks down complex questions into sub-questions. So in this example, I have what is rough to vec and weaviate? In order to answer this question, it needs to be broken down into two sub-questions. So I have first, what is rough to vec and what is weaviate? Those two questions both go through my vector, my weaviate vector database and it outputs the response. So each question is going to generate an answer and then in order to combine it into one, you have to pass it through the response synthesizer and it outputs the answer of rough to vec vectorizes an object and it stores the embeddings in Weavey. The recursive retriever takes the reference node relationships rather than only outputting a node that is most relevant to your query. So in this example, I have brought what is rough to vec. The first chunk is what is capable of answering my question. So we take that chunk and we find the index where this was discussed. So in this case, it is podcast number 31. So once I we are in that index, we take the original query, which is what is rough to vec, along with the chunk or node that is most relevant, and it outputs the answer. The self-correcting query engine uses an LLM to evaluate its response. So in the example again of what is rough to vec, it answers rough to vec vectorizes an object. If my evaluation is prompted with not being too vague or not being too long, it will then say, meh, that's not a great output. So we're gonna hit the original query along with the evaluator to make a new query. So instead, what is being passed in is, what is rough to vec and how does it vectorize objects? So give it a little more information. It says that the output is like a thumbs up. It's great because of the evaluation that it has been prompted with previously. And it outputs the answer that is a bit longer and answers how uh, ref to vec vectorizes objects. Let's begin with the SQL router. So first we'll need to connect to a Weavey instance. And in this case, I'm just using Weavey embedded. We'll need to define our schema, which I'm using the podcast, and then we'll load in the data. So I'm just using the YouTube transcript reader that you can find on the Llama Hub and then passing in uh, different URLs. Then I'm going to be building the Weavey in index. And if you aren't familiar with this, you can watch episode two. After that, I will need to create my SQL table because a reminder, when I ask a question, it's going to route it to either my Weaviate vector database or my SQL database. Okay, so I'm creating my uh, podcast stats table and it just create uh, contains three different properties. So podcast title, views, and duration. Okay, now I'm just gonna add data to it. Then I'm creating the SQL table in Llama index and now just setting it up for the text to SQL prompt. Then I'll need to build the query engine now. The next step is to have Llama index know about these tools. So I am defining what my Weavey vector database is, so saying that it can handle semantic questions about Weavey release podcasts, and then for my SQL one, saying that it can translate a natural query into a SQL query and index or go into that database. Now we can ask a question. So the first question is, which release podcast had the most views? Rather than going to the vector database, it's gonna hit the SQL database. So it's going to output the podcast title and then the number of views that it had. Moving on to the second question of, tell me about a new feature in Weavey 120 that cannot be handled by a SQL database. So instead it's going to go to your Weaviate index or Weaviate database and then answer the question. Now we'll jump over to the sub question query engine. So you'll need to connect to your Weaviate instance again. And in this example, I'm also using Weaviate embedded, defining your schema. So in this example, I'm using the blog posts. 
then I'll need to load in the data. And from the Llama Hub, I'm using the simple web page reader. So just passing in the URL to the blog post that I want to query. Then I'm constructing my vector store, passing in my OpenAI key, I'm passing in the client, which is connecting to the WeV embedded, then my class, which is blog post, and then text key, and then content, which is the property. Then I'm setting up the storage for the embeddings and then setting up the index with the blog and then the storage and then defining my query engine. Then I want to set up the sub question query engine. Here I have the blog post and then a description about it. So the blog post is about the integration of Llama index and Weaviate. And this is important because in the sub question query engine, you can actually have it reference various sources. But in this example, I'm only using one. Now the fun part, of course, is querying. So I have how does Llama index help data indexing and reviate. And right off of the bat, you already know that that question needs to be uh, separated into multiple parts. And as you can see with this beautiful coloring, we it generated three sub questions. So it has what is Llama index, what is Weaviate, and how does Llama index integrate with Weaviate? Each color corresponds to the question and answer. And then again, it passes it through the response synthesizer to gather all of the previous outputs into one simple answer. So it says that Llama Index helps uh, data indexing and Weavey by providing tools and capabilities for data ingestion, etc. If you would like to learn more about how Llama Index helps data indexing and Weavey, you can check out the blog post on the on Weavey.io by Jerry. Now we'll go over the recursive retrieval query engine. So again, connect to your Weaviate instance and define your schema. So in this example, I'm using the Weaviate blog post and the Hugging Face blog post, and I'm saving it as two separate classes and each have the content property. Then I will want to load in the data. So again, passing in my OpenAI key and then grabbing the data by passing in the URL, which is using the simple web page reader. So I am grabbing the PQ rescoring from the Weavate blog and then from Hugging Face, the RAM efficient PyTorch uh, blog post. Then now I'll need to create my index. So I'm providing a summary of what each index is. So for Weaviate, I'm saying, uh, this node provides blog posts from Weaviate, a vector database. And then for Hugging Face, just explaining that it will contain tools for training machine learning models. Okay, and now I'm building out my index. So when it's retrieving the most relevant node, it will then in enter the index that contains either information about Weaviate or Hugging Face. Then I will need to build out the recursive retriever query engine. So the first question that we have is what is product quantization? And this is obviously from the Weaviate blog. So you can see that that is where it's entering. Once it has the question that is entering the Weaviate blogs index, and then it will output the response of what product quantization is. Similarly, we can do the same for hugging face. So I have what does FSDP do? It is entering the Hugging Face blogs and then outputs the answer. The last query engine I'll be covering is the self-correcting query engine. So again, connect to your Weavey instance. And in this demo, I'm using the Weavey blogs. And then I'm just passing in the data by using the simple directory reader. Then I'm constructing my Weavey vector store. Again, passing in my index name, which is a class along with the property. And then setting up the yeah, the index, and then jumping into a query. So this is a query without the self-correcting. So I'm asking, what is ref to vec And you can see that the answer is kind of, it's pretty short and doesn't provide too much information or it doesn't answer the question how I like. So this is where you can configure this with the self-correcting query engine. And notice in this first line, the first um, library or the first fu uh, function, that I'm importing is the evaluation guide and then the default guidelines. So I just wanna share what is set when you import that. And what it is doing is 
uh, finding this parameter that has three different prompts for the large language model to consider when it is doing the evaluation of the response. So the first one is the response should fully answer the query. It should avoid being too vague or ambiguous. And then the response should be specific and use statistics or numbers when possible. In my question, it doesn't need the last one, but regardless, it's still it's still a really good prompt to improve the response from the query engine. I added on, so I'm taking the default guideline, but then I'm also including that the response to try to summarize where possible so it's not too long of an answer. And also because I'm being charged for this, I don't want it to be extremely information heavy. And then I have that the response should mention Weavy and not be too big. So kind of tricky, but this is the job for the large language model to figure out. Now I want to see where it the evaluation is coming into play with the original query that I asked. So now I'll see how can the response be improved and I want to see the thinking of the large language model. So it's saying that the response fails to mention Weavy and it is too vague. So it's saying, okay, how can I improve this, which is great. So here is the improved answer or like a bit of the answer, which is how it can mention Weavy and how it can improve the information. So then it has, it ends with this question of what is rough to back and how does it work with Weavy? Now I'll print the final answer that it outputs. And also I want to add that you can uh, specify the number of times that you want it to evaluate itself. And this example, I, it's only doing it once, but maybe you're like, maybe the third time is the charm and that is what you set it to. Maybe your answer improves or maybe it just gets worse. It's just something to decide. Um, okay, so the final answer that it outputs is ref to is a method of representing. So it defines what ref to is and how it is used in Weaviate and then also the applications. So to me, this is an A plus answer. Thank you so much for watching episode three of the Weavy and Llama Index series. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you'd like to begin from the start of this series, you can check out the links on this video or down below in the description. Take care and thanks for watching. Bye! Say bye, Bowen. <laughs>